Zoran Sanji fighting in the background, Black Lightning. <laughs> Got him. Got him. Yeah. Hold up. Wait a minute. Now listen, that's not important. Because honest to God, even though they're fighting in the background like goons once again, as per usual, I was more intrigued with what Nami, Yamato, and... There's something weird. Kiku, we're going to do with this crazy double page bath bath scene moment and i was kind of surprised okay yamato called me off guard kiku called me off guard yamato in a good way in a very 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 good wholesome way who wants a nami happiness punch when you're getting gatling with yamato's absolutely massive <laughs> kiku <laughs> i ain't say anything i am saying nothing but I asked questions during the streams on both YouTube and on Twitch. And <laughs> there's a lot of Kiku supporters. It is June, after all, and there are plenty of Kiku supporters. But that, honest to God, was a pretty funny moment with the bad stuff. And also, if you want to know, you can check out my live stream reactions to this chapter of One Piece on both my YouTube Cole Requiem channel and my twitch.tv channels link in the box below to both but to me personally the most important thing in this chapter was not the bathhouse scenes of the men's and the women's bathhouse was not even apu coming in there and having here's a big bounty drop and yes even though we do have a man with send you dna he's coming in at full steam into water country right now actually no not full steam because even a kind who says whoa, whoa, whoa hey Hey, Ryo Kyugyu, do not do anything unnecessary. No shot. Shh, don't do it. Okay. So, stealth it. See what's going on. PP or there. Not a big deal. Maybe he actually does more. Like, for example, the idea here is, let's say he does help out the vegetation, the fauna of Wano Country. So, he would help out with the agriculture. He would actually help produce crops and fruits and vegetables and so on and so forth. Let's say as a peace broker deal or something like that, may maybe, maybe? Because you have to wonder why is he come here specifically and we see his abilities of the flower and the helicopter thing. It's kind of cute, but also kind of, <laughs> even though it's cute, he's an animal for a reason. So it's pretty strong without a doubt. But even though I am really, 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 really intrigued to see what Oda does with Green Bull, right now, that's not my main focus. I really am happy to see death. Um, not the Grim Reaper, but Zoro. I mean, we have potentially Hawkins dying, and then we have the confirmed deaths of Ashra Doji and Izo. I have been saying this for a while now, but for me, a scabber death was a big, big deal. Why? Because when you have a war setting situation, it doesn't make much sense. It seems very childlike to have fake out death after fake out death after fake out death. And knowing Oda, seeing how so many times in these very tense situations, he's going through hell and high water just to save someone when honest to God, their value in the story is nil or at least nine nil. And Ashra Doji was one of these people as well as Izo. Izo, he went out studly. I'll, I'll give him that. Him versus CP0, very studly. Ashra Doji, a lot less so, honestly, with the whole Kanjiro Odin clone thing and then getting stabbed, explosions, and blah. Okay, fine, whatever. But Oda is notorious for being Teletubby, Pillsbury Doughboy, soft, in real time. But then in flashbacks, will kill so many people. The body counts of Stalin, Hitler, Mao, nothing, nothing on this man. It's it's absurd. But here we have actual fatalities that matter. Not let's say a major one. Like let's say for example Kinemon. Oh, that would have been a big. That would have been a big one. No, 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 no. But we still get Ashra Doji, and we still get Izo. So Marco, I do feel bad for him in a way. Just just just, just a little bit, because for the greater good of the overall story itself. These things had to die because it gives, I argue, more credence, more weight to the actual war itself when major side characters are actually dying for the sake of this battle. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because now I can say, okay, 
this war was better structured, had better intensity because people actually genuinely died in this war. Major side characters, uh, side characters, okay? That I think is a good play. So I've been saying it for a while now. I need to see death, 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 death. I need to see murder. Murder on a scale never before seen. And I saw it. Thank you. Now, Hawkins dying is also a pretty big deal too, in a way. However, is he actually dead? I'm not too sure. That one kind of, by the way, see in the future. But a supernova die is a big deal. And there is a hiccup here that have between anime and the manga potentially. And what it is, is that in the anime, in episode 1001, Hawkins actually states that the person who has a 1% chance of survival is Drake, not himself. But in this chapter, it's actually himself, Hawkins. This might mean that in the future of the anime, for One Piece, there could be a slight continuity issue between the manga and the anime. Honest to God, all you gotta do is say, Hawkins lied. Where actually it wasn't you, Drake, it was me. That's it. But that was one of the things that the anime had, quote, spoiled, end quote, for the manga readers of One Piece. And yet, because it's now changing the manga, because the manga now has as Hawkins, the anime will probably have to add a little more dialogue there in the future to where, hold on, I actually lied. It wasn't you, it was me. Something of that sort. That's my guess. But overall, this chapter was a pretty nice, funny chapter. It was a good wrap-up chapter. Honest to God, when I saw Yamato on the rooftop by herself and the civilians had mentioned how their heroes had left, I, I was sweating buckets. Yo, go back to my live reaction. I, I was sweating buckets when they said that they had left and I saw Yamato still on the roof. Uh, oh, oh, whoo, that was, that was a crazy fake out. Um, also, Zoro back on his feet actually alive. Death did not take Zoro. But to be fair, apparently he went to hell and came back. So shout to Chopper for literally having a Phoenix down from Final Fantasy. Also, Momosuke has lost his innocent card. So he can no longer just grab Nami's tatas. Oh my god. No, no. Sanji and Brooke. Hey. Ha! Hey, you one of us now. You one of us. But you can kind of see here how he has a very strong, tough body off the rip. All right. The body of the Chad. So it kind of means, I suppose, that in the future. Momo, let's say if there's a global war, Momo can actually maybe be an, a genuine fighter in that war. Kaido's Devil Fruit, a strong base body. I mean, yeah, maybe in the future, if there is a global war, Momonosuke is part of that war and is actually fighting people. He has the samurai to train him easily around him. Yeah, I mean, that could actually happen in the future. But finally, leading up to all this stuff, bounty time. Mm, I am, yo, I'm hella happy. I dropped the video for the bounties today. Check it out also too, over here in the corner. Check it out. These bounties are gonna be big. And Apu notes to how there are folks that have been dubbed new emperors, but he doesn't say the word Yonko. He says emperor. Shout outs to the Twitch chat for that one. So let's say for example, Big Mom and Kaido are now no longer emperors because they don't know what's going on there. And I would argue actually, like let's say in terms of death here, that Kaido, probably not, but Big Mom definitely is not dead, given so many factors that have been stated throughout the entirety of this post time skip. Now, that could be Cope, but I don't think so. I think it makes a lot of sense, because when have we ever seen Oda, after a major fight, actually kill that final villain or villains? That's rarely ever happened. Rarely ever happened. So Katakuri, alive. Crocodile, alive. NL, alive. Horty Jones, alive. Rob Lucci, Rob Gucci, alive, all along, alive. So come on, this rarely ever happens, if ever, if ever. So Kaido, Big Mom, Big Mom particularly, given, again, previous plot points, probably still alive. However, when Apu says newly dubbed emperors, he's not saying Yonko, which means that it could be Goko, or in a general sense, no more Yonko, Goko, or any of that Ko stuff, forget about it, just emperors of the sea. And in this case, there could be five now, where you have Blackbeard, Shanks, Monkey D. Luffy, Eustace Captain Kido, and Trrrr, Al Falger B. Vote Law as the new emperors of the new world. Because that's the whole point here. The emperors are people 
that rule over the new world with an iron fist. So even though no territory, even though army's not that big at all, just a few tight-knit crews, but you be emperors, potentially you get that emperor status. Yeah, okay. Let's see how that goes. But keep in mind this too. There's still a lot to get to before this arc is over. And, well, maybe. Because given Oda's message about taking a break, there might not be any more Wano after this one month break, but there still could be. Not sure exactly. But where's Robin? There is a bath scene with all these girls, and Robin's not involved? Seems sus. Where is the number one girl in One Piece? Doing her job. Hopefully. Pone glyphs. There is so much lore on the horizon. And my lore glands salivating.